Welcome. This is 49i2 and the title is Charge Carrier Drift Velocity. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at a section of wire. And in this section of wire it's got a cross-sectional area A, it's got a length delta X, and we have positive charges. And these are traveling away from the positive terminal of the battery around the circuit towards the negative terminal of the battery and we'd like to get an idea how quickly for a, 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 a direct current, a DC circuit with reasonable numbers, how quickly those charge carriers travel. You might say well it's instantaneous because when I close the switch on my circuit my light bulb lights up immediately and so the charge carriers must have gone at least from the switch to the light bulb, if not from the battery to the light bulb, in an instant. And uh, I think we'll find actually that uh, that's not the answer. So what we say is uh, we can relate the current flow to the number of mobile charge carriers per unit volume, that's N, so many per unit volume. These are the free electrons in reality, or the free charges, the ones that can travel. Uh, the charge on each of the charge carriers, that's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, that's the charge of a charge carrier. The so-called drift velocity of the charge carriers, that's how quickly they tend to move with the electric field, and the area of the wire A. And what we say is, well, my current is going to equal to, well, we said dq by dt, the amount of charge flowing per time interval. And this amount of charge, well, it's going to be the number of charge carriers per unit volume. That gives me a number. And if I multiply it by q, that is the amount of charge per charge carrier, that gives me the charge associated with those free charge carriers. Now, it's charge carriers per unit volume. So then if I multiply by the velocity, I will get velocity, well, let's, let's velocity times delta t. There's my velocity times delta t, which is my delta x. So I'm gonna put that in my velocity times delta t. That's my drift velocity times delta t, how far the charge carriers will travel in a given time. And then I multiply by a, that's the area. So these two terms here have told me my volume. And these two terms here have told me my charge per volume. So this is charge. This is how much charge there is inside this volume here. And I want charge divided by time, so I divide this by delta T. So I have the amount of charge per unit volume multiplied by the volume that's swept out in a certain time divided by that time. And that gives me the current. And so when I simplify, I get N, Q, the drift velocity, A, as my answer. So it's not easy, it's not difficult to, to intuit it. The, I suppose the most, the most less obvious bit is that my delta X is equal to my velocity divided by my time. It's like saying, oh... I went 50 miles an hour for two hours. And we can say that's 100 miles. We, we can figure it out. It's just, it's not usually written in terms of, you know, uh, parameters. So there's my equation. Now, I'm interested in this drift velocity. So let's look at a problem where we're given just reasonable numbers. So we have a, 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 a current of five amps flowing through so I is equal to 5 amps 
flowing through a sample of wire. Here's my sample of wire. The wire is made of copper, and copper actually has, I've, I looked this up, this was 8.5 times 10 to the plus 28 mobile charge carriers per unit volume. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, 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 carriers per volume. And the wire has a two millimeter by two millimeter cross section. Oh, so I'm not given I'm not given my area. I'm given my length of side. No big deal. An L is equal to two times ten to the minus three meters. Two millimeters by two millimeters. Each mobile charge carrier has a charge, so Q is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, whoops, 19 coulombs. So then what is the charge carrier drift velocity? So what I do is I say, well, I know that I is equal to the number of charge carriers per unit volume times the charge gives me the amount of charge per unit volume times, let's have a see, what was it? It was uh, my delta x, and my delta x was the drift velocity uh, uh, times my little bit of time. And then I multiplied by my a to get the volume, and then I divided it by delta t. So I is equal to NQ drift velocity delta uh, times A. So that means that drift velocity is equal to I over NQA, which equals 5 divided by N. 8.5 times 10 to the 28 Q 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and then A A is <laughs> 2 times 10 to the minus 3 squared so my drift velocity is equal to I get my calculator now it's easy when you're dividing by a bunch of things to make just just mistakes so this is the way I do it I go 5 divided by and I take my first number and I go 8.5 second EE to the 28 and then I press enter that's done I'm also dividing by uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 so now say divide uh, uh, and it goes answer divided by 1.6 second EE to the minus 19 enter that's that taken care of and I'm not even going to worry about the square I'm going to say divide by 2 second EE to the minus 3 one time enter and then say let's do that again so divide uh, 2 second EE to the minus 3 again and I am getting one where well, I'm getting nine point zero uh, really sorry I'm gonna say that again nine point two nine point two times ten to the and it's minus one two three four five ten to the minus five meters per second which if you think about it is 92 micrometers per second. It's, to put it another way, it's going to be, uh, let's see, 92 times 10 to the minus 6 meters per second. It's going to be 0. Let's see if we can do this right. Uh, 
one, two, three, zero point zero nine two times ten to the minus three meters per second. It's it's a tenth of a millimeter per second. It's actually a hundredth of a millimeter per second. It's a very small velocity. This is this is this would take uh, for this thing to go by an inch would take um, what would it take? It would take uh, 26, and it's taken. It take about 200 seconds to go an inch. It's it's a very small velocity. So how come when you turn the lights on, you flick the switch and the lights light immediately? And you've got to think of it like a bicycle chain. It's a loop of a circuit. And in a bicycle chain, as soon as I press on the pedals and move them, every cog in that chain moves. And the back wheel immediately starts to move. And in the same way, inside the wire, all those electrons can feel each other. And as soon as an electron, if you like, is pushed out of the battery, it pushes the electron in front, which 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 pushes the electron in front, and so on. So as soon as you close the switch and let electrons be pushed out of the battery, electrons have been pushed through the light. It's not instantaneous, but it's very close. But the drift velocity for an electron to actually make it all the way around the circuit, oh, that's really quite a, a slow velocity. So there we have it.